My daughter hasn't started calling me daddy yet. Maybe it's because I'm always on the go and don't see her much. When my husband and I visited our best friend's new house, her husband, John, said that. I quickly reassured him. It's not like that. I tried chatting with her daughter, but she only stared at me, not uttering a word. I recalled Jean saying she was a quiet one, and it seemed accurate. Lost in thought, I was jolted when Reina's expression changed as she saw the person standing behind me. She darted past me, beaming, Daddy, let's play! My heart stopped as I spun around. Reina was hugging not John, but my husband. Sweetie, your daddy is over here, John said, attempting to bring her to him, but she clung tighter to my husband, tears in her eyes. No, I want to play with daddy. My husband appeared dumbfounded and uneasy. What's going on, Kev? Little did I know, a surprising revelation awaited us. My name is Helen, and I'm a 33-year-old working at a city hall. I first met my now husband, Kevin, in college. My good friend Jean invited me to a co-ed barbecue, and that's where Kevin and I crossed paths. He was tied with Jean's boyfriend, John, as they'd gone to high school together. Helen, Kevin's a catch. How about swapping numbers? Suggested Jean's boyfriend. I had a good vibe from Kevin, so we exchanged info. Things progressed from there, and soon we were dating. Jean and John were thrilled for us, and would often go out as a foursome. Throughout college, my memories always have Jean, John, and Kevin in them. Post-grad, I started working at City Hall. Kevin took on a role at his father's law firm, preparing to inherit the business. Jean ventured into fashion, while top student John landed a gig at a trading firm. Our bond remained strong, even after launching our career, often catching up over dinner. Jean and John tied the knot when we were 26, and Kevin and I spoke fondly of them at their reception. A year on, Kevin popped the question, and I was over the moon. We became man and wife. I recall that at the time Jean was expecting, and John couldn't have been happier. Fast forward five years, they had a girl, Reina. John's work took them abroad, but Jean and I stayed in touch. His job kept him busy, often overseas. Jean adjusted, focusing on being a full-time mom. As for Kevin and me, half a decade into matrimony, we cherished our quiet existence, though it lacked the spark of our earlier years. One concern loomed. We hadn't been able to conceive. Already 33, I was yearning for a child and growing anxious. One evening, I broached the subject with Kevin. It didn't happen for us again this month. Distracted by a show, he responded, Oh, really? Should we consider a fertility clinic? You want a family too, right? Why rush? Let's just see what happens. We've been waiting five years. I'm concerned. He turned off the TV. Not this again. I'm not up for a clinic visit. Disheartened, I barely whispered. But why? Without answering, he said, I'm heading to bed leaving me in the living room, tears welling up. The next week, I sought Jean's advice. Sharing my worries, I told her, Kevin's not on board with treatments. Over the phone, she responded gently, That's rough. Have you been tested? I have. They said I'm fine. Sometimes, it's just about the right match. Stay strong. Our chat lightened my mood, if only a little. I shifted gears and asked about her daughter, Reina. Thanks for letting me vent. How's Reina doing? She's five now, isn't she? 
Yeah, she's good. But we think she might have some developmental challenges. She's not much of a talker. Oh, is that so? But she is my precious girl, no matter what. I bet she is. Has it been two years since we last saw each other? I miss you, Jean. To that, she responded with enthusiasm. Guess what? We are having a house built right now. Once it's ready, how about we all meet up? Seriously? That's awesome! Count us in for a housewarming party! Sounds great! Can't wait to see you too! I ended the call after a chat. Catching up with an old friend really boosted my mood. Later that evening, I shared the update with Kevin. I chatted with Jean today. Oh, how's she holding up? She is good, and so is Reina. John's off on yet another extended business trip. He's always buried in work. Kevin's mood seemed to lift just hearing their names. And here's a surprise. They're having a house built. No kidding. With John's taste, it's probably huge. It might be. We talked about catching up at their housewarming once everything is settled. Mid a conversation, Kevin interjected. You know, we should think about getting a place of our own too. I responded. Before a house, I want a baby. We'd need to plan for things like a nursery. His face clouded over. Not this again. It matters to me, Kev. It's on you that we don't have kids. I know I'm fine. His words caught me off guard. What do you mean? I've been checked out and everything is good on my end. How can you say you're okay when you haven't even been to a clinic? He looked briefly rattled, but then shot back. Whatever the case, our fertility issues, they're on you. If you want kids, maybe step up your game before gripping about it. He quickly finished his beer and made a beeline for the bathroom. His words stunned me into silence, and I sat processing for a bit. Fast forward a month, and Jean told us their house was ready. With a gift in tow, Kevin and I drove about an hour to their impressive new digs. It was even more luxurious than I'd pictured, but I suppose it was within reach given John's earnings. Great to see you, Kevin and Helen. John greeted us. Hey ma'am, back from traveling, John? Sure I am. Just got in yesterday, but I'm off to Europe in a couple of months. The two guys seemed genuinely thrilled to catch up. Entering the living room, I spotted Jean in the kitchen. Congrats on the new place, Jean. Brought you a little something. I handed her our gift and she replied warmly. Thanks so much. As we talked, a thought struck me. Where's Reina? She's up in her room playing. Like I said before, she's a bit unique. Got it. Mind if I pop in and say hi? Before Jean could reply, John, having overheard, commented with a touch of melancholy. She still doesn't call me daddy. Maybe it's because I'm always on the go and doesn't see her much. That's not the reason, John. In her eyes, you're the best dad. Trying to reassure him, we were interrupted by the soft patter of little feet. Reina was coming down the stairs. She had grown so much since the last time I'd seen her. Hi, Reina. It's been a while. Do you remember me? I'm Helen, a friend of your mom and dad. I said brightly, but she just stared silently. I recalled Jean saying she was a quiet one, and it seemed accurate. Lost in thought, I was jolted when Reina's expression changed as she saw the person standing behind me. She darted past me, beaming, Daddy, let's play! My heart stopped as I spun around. 
Raina was hugging not John, but my husband. Jean and John looked just as shocked. Sweetie, your daddy's over here. John said, attempting to bring her to him, but she clung tighter to my husband, tears in her eyes. No, I want to play with daddy. My husband appeared dumbfounded and uneasy. What's going on, Kev? He responded, trying to brush it off. Kids get mixed up, you know. She's just a little one. Jean added, laughing it off. Yeah, kids can be so random. Oh, Reyna, they always keep you guessing. All I could do was force a laugh. Later, Reyna retreated to watch some TV, and amidst the tension, we ate and soon left. On our way home, I mentioned, Reyna seemed pretty fond of you today, even though she's typically so shy. He looked uncomfortable, then said, Kids are unpredictable. It sure was something. We drove the rest of the way in silence. The next morning, I got a text. Helen, thanks for coming by yesterday. We need to talk. Just us. It was from John. I quickly texted back. I've been thinking the same thing. See you this evening. We met at a local cafe that night. John was already waiting when I arrived. I sat down across from him. Thanks for coming, Helen. I wanted to discuss. I cut him off. Kevin and Jean, right? He nodded slightly. Even though I'm often away, I never doubted Jean. But after Rainer's daddy moment, it's been eating at me. Me too. It's a stretch, but could Raina be Kevin's? His reaction confirmed my suspicions. We need proof. I'll try to get as much proof as I can on my end. Can you handle your side? I'm on board to help figure this out. Where do we start? A month later, I suggested a trip to Kevin. He settled into the passenger seat as I drove us straight to John and Jean's. As we pulled in, he was visibly confused. Why are we here? John's place? What's the deal? Thought we'd drop in for dinner. I said, feigning cheerfulness. When I knocked, Jean's surprised face greeted us. Helen, Kevin, what's the occasion? Then John appeared. Come in. Reyna's with my folks, so she's not here. He led us to the living room, sitting opposite to my husband with me next to him. Helen, why are you sitting with John? Kevin asked, bewildered. Smiling, I motioned for him and Jean to sit across from us. What's the point of this? It's so unexpected. As they tried to grasp the situation, John said firmly, Let's talk about the two of you and your relationship. Their expression said it all. Jean, looking shocked, quickly fired back. What relationship are you talking about? Kevin is just the husband of my good friend. Is that so? I clicked on the voice recorder I held, playing their voices for everyone to hear. Ma'am, that was close the other day. I didn't see Reyna run into you like that coming. Took me by surprise, too. Luckily, they didn't catch on. Can't even think about what would happen if they realized I was her dad. Well, my husband's kind of obvious, so we're good. But let's enjoy today. The recording kept playing their intimate chatter until Jean yelled, Turn it off! How could you? What is this? Kevin was in panic. Staying calm, I replied. All those overtime days? I put a voice recorder in your car. It played right into my hands. Both of them looked utterly stunned. John passed them a document. I also did a DNA test. Reyna isn't related to me. Start talking. After a beat, 
they spilled everything. Kevin, envious of John's success and charm, pursued Jean back in college. She was game, seeking some thrill. Being part of a foursome made their secret trysts easier. Jean got pregnant, presenting Reina as John's child. They've met secretly, making sure Reina called John daddy. After hearing it all, John just shook his head. You two are something else. I'm going to sue you both. I chimed in. Count me in. I'll see this through, even if it ends up in court. They exchanged nervous looks. Jean finally said, "Fine, let's get a divorce. The real family can be happy together." Kevin retorted, "I don't want a barren wife anyway. I have a sweet kid." At this, I couldn't hold back my laughter. They looked dumbfounded. A real family, a sweet kid. You can't be serious. What's so funny? I shook back. Kevin, you're the infertile one. I secretly had a sample from you checked at a clinic. Turns out you can't naturally father a child. What? I smirked. So, who's Reina's real dad? Kevin turned a deep shade of red, while Jean turned ashen. They bickered back and forth until John threw them out. In the aftermath. Kevin and I, as well as Jean and John, all went our separate ways in divorce. They racked up debt compensating us. DNA confirmed Reina wasn't Kevin's. Jean stayed mum about the real father, and last I heard, her parents are raising Reina. The identity of Reina's dad remains a mystery. Both Jean and Kevin, now on their own, are hustling to pay off their debts. While they are clearly having a rough go, I can't muster any pity. As for me, life's been good—just me and my peace. John and I, having faced the storm together, occasionally grab a drink as pals. While I can't see us dating, I hope our friendship lasts. My focus now: my work and finding someone genuine.